Hey everyone, welcome back to another devlog from my game that I'm currently calling Project TRS, which is an RPG sim style game that's kind of like Stardew Valley meets Mountain Blade, but with tower defense style battles. In my last devlog I talked about how I have a lot of the basic systems in place, like my inventory and quest system, so now I just need to build kind of a manager system that ties them all together. The end goal being a system that doles out somewhat random quests to the player each day. The manager class will also deal with other day resetting things like NPC dialogue and item spawns. Instead of just showing you the end result, I thought I'd try something a little different and take you through a week of my life balancing game dev, work, and hobbies, vlog style. I generally try to wake up around 7am every day, drink a glass of water, and go for a walk. I like walking first thing in the morning because it gets me some sunshine, which helps me wake up, it gets me moving, and it stops me from looking at my phone or guzzling coffee right when I wake up. After I get back from my walk, I'll do my morning pages, which, if you don't already know, is a journaling technique from a book called The Artist's Way, where you just write whatever for three pages. The book tells you to do it by hand, but I found this website called 750 Words a long time ago that is basically just an online morning pages journal, and for some reason the habit of writing in this website has just stuck with me for years. So I'm breaking the rules a little bit by typing, but this just works for me. At 8am, I have my first meeting of the day, so I'll eat a quick breakfast of oatmeal and grab a tall cup of cold coffee that was left over from yesterday, which is probably my most degenerate habit. Just drinking nasty old cold coffee. I don't know, the heart wants what it wants. Anyway, I'll grab my coffee and head into the office for my morning meeting. So I just finished my first meeting and this is kind of when my work day begins in earnest. I don't have like a real set routine for my work day, I just kind of play it by ear. Some days I have more meetings than others. Today I don't have too busy of a schedule, so hopefully I'll have a little bit of time for game dev, but I usually try to reserve the hours of 8 to 5 for my full-time job and then I'll kind of do game dev after work or in between tasks or whenever. Yeah, I'm just going to get to work and I'll check in a little bit later. Pretty much done with work for the day and I have some time before dinner so I'm gonna work on my game. Like I said this week I'm trying to work on kind of a day manager. I sort of reset stuff every day and will dole out the quests appropriately, spawn items appropriately, all of the things that need to happen when a new day starts. That's what this manager is gonna kind of do. So yeah I'm gonna get to it and I'll check in when I have some progress. Okay, so I've actually been able to make some pretty good progress on the quest system. If we open up the menu and click the quest tabs, you'll see there's a little bit better of a UI going on, but aside from that, we have our quest listed here that's gather radishes for the NPC Landon. If we go back to our inventory, we'll see we already have two radishes in there, so we can just go give these to Landon straight away. Notice the give button is available because he has an active quest currently. Click that, give. And then if we open our quest up again, you'll see it's gone because we've completed this quest. That was already kind of working in the last devlog. The new addition is that if I go to sleep in my outside bed here, start my next day, I have another quest. And this is a different one. This is now he needs three potatoes. If we go into our inventory, we only have one potato. So let's go pick up some potatoes. Now we can give them to Landon and complete our second quest. So there's still a bit of work to do when the quests start to repeat. The quest plugin that I'm using kind of assumes that all of your quests will be unique, which makes sense for a lot of games, but in my game, a lot of the quests will just kind of repeat over and over. Sort of like in Stardew Valley, like the Help Wanted board will just have the same kind of quests after a while. That's sort of what I want for my game, so I have to refactor the quest system and also the way that I'm sort of accessing these quests using like the Pandora system and all of that, so that I can actually repeat the quests, because currently they're just resources which are static, and so every time I affect one resource it affects every instance of that resource. So when a already completed quest gets repeated, it's still completed, it just is in your quest log again. So there's a little bit of work to do there, but I'm pretty happy with what I have so far, and I think it was pretty good progress just for like an hour and a half. I'm honestly kind of tired though, so I think I'll probably just play a little bit of Baldur's Gate, then eat dinner, and then, you know, it's off to bed. So I'll catch up with you guys tomorrow.
Yesterday at work got super busy and then after work I was just kind of like tired so I just sort of played video games and chilled and then today I was sort of, I don't know, just kind of like lazy all day so I didn't really do it much but it's a little bit after dinner time now and I'm feeling a little motivated to do some game dev so I'm going to continue working on whatever I was working on before, I can't even remember. So yeah, I guess that's kind of the lesson here is how do you balance game dev and full-time jobs? Sometimes you don't. Sometimes you're just lazy and you go to sleep and play video games. Okay, so yesterday I was working on trying to duplicate the quest resources so you can just have them infinitely repeat since when you complete a quest, the quest resource itself is actually updated or changed. And if I want to repeat that quest, since resources are static, it'll still be the same resource. So the way I solved that was like just this quick little thing right here where I just duplicate the quest resource. And then I loop through the steps in the quest resource because the steps are resources as well. And I duplicate them as, as well. You may be asking why I don't just do true for the duplication function so that it duplicates the sub resources, but because the based quest resource actually has two other exported functions that I don't want to duplicate. And also when I tried doing the duplicate with the argument of true, it didn't work anyways. So I think this is, oops. I think this is a fine solution. It's a little weird and it's kind of like working against the way that the quest system plugin sort of works. It's kind of like an anti-pattern. Uh, so I may end up just like refactoring this whole thing later, but for now I think it works. Okay, so now that we're duplicating our quests correctly, we can just do like an infinite loop of quests, which is kind of cool because it's sort of like a, like a little mini gameplay loop that's super boring. So we just load it in and if I check what quests I have, I need to gather three potatoes but I only have one potato because I'm a poor person with no potatoes. So I'll go pick up some potatoes. We'll give him the potatoes, complete the quest. And then if we go to sleep, we have another quest, it's the radish quest. It takes the quest out of rotation until all of the quests have been done. So we would never see the potato questing yet until we've gone through all of the quests. Currently there's only two, so we just have to complete this one and then it'll give us a random one. Or it'll refresh all of the quests I have, the, the two, radishes and potatoes. Anyways, we already have the radishes. I'm poor in potatoes, but I'm rich in radishes, so I'll give him the radishes. Give, thanks, that's super helpful. And then I will go to sleep. I'll start a new day. And now we have the potatoes quest again. This is random. It doesn't just go in that order, but since there's only two, it's like very likely you'll get the same one. But point is it works now. It'll just infinitely give you quests over and over every day, which is a game. I mean, you can do stuff in this game, which is cool. It's a boring game. It's not very fun just picking up potatoes and radishes, but it's exciting to see like it's a start, you know, that's cool. So to be honest, that took me like total like five minutes to fix that bug. Uh, I ran into some other bugs with my inventory that I do not want to think about right now. So I'm just going to pretend they don't exist. Um, but I also just downloaded a really sweet VR game that I want to play. So you can see I got the, the Oculus back there. Um, so I'm just going to be lazy again tonight and play video games. Okay, so it's after work on Thursday and I just was editing the video up to this point and realized that I've been super lazy for this whole vlog week. So today I'm actually gonna put in some serious work hours on my game. Um, I mean, I say that now, but like probably in an hour or something, I'll just want to slack off again. But yeah, I kind of need to do some planning. I'm not totally sure what to do next in my game. I mean, like there's bugs and I could add content and stuff, but, but now that I've finished the sort of like quest system thing, uh, I'm not sure what I want to tackle next. I still obviously need to do like combat and tons of other stuff, but I don't know what should be next to my priority. So I'm going to work on planning for a little bit and then I'll probably jump into some code. Just a quick update here before I start on the next like big feature, I wanted to make sure that it was pretty easy to iterate on this current quest system I have. So I thought it would be a good exercise to try to create a new NPC and see if it all just kind of works. And the good news, spoiler alert, is that it does just all work and it was super easy. So I've got this new NPC character, Nasuada, which is definitely a reference to the inheritance cycle, like Aragon and all that. I just finished like rereading the series a couple months ago, so I was a little inspired. 
Anyways, she inherits from the original NPC, which is now just called NPC, but this one's just basically Landon, uh, which is me, but in video game form. And all I had to do to update her NPC data was create a new dialogue resource using the dialogue plugin and select Nasuada from the Pandora entities because I have both Landon and Nasuada defined in the database. So to see this all in action, if we start the game and we check our quest log, we have gather radishes. So hold on, I gotta appease Landon's radish session before I can show the other quest. So give me one second. Okay, so we're back and if we check the quest log, this is Landon needs three potatoes, but I know this as the developer that it's actually Nasuada who needs the three potatoes. So if we gather our three potatoes, I should probably just like start the game with three potatoes. Anyways, so we go here, the give button is available, click give, give the three potatoes, and Nasuada has her own unique dialogue for when you complete a quest. You can also talk to her and she has unique dialogue. Her talk gets disabled because you've already talked to her until you sleep and over here, Landon still has his own unique dialogue. So I'm pretty pumped about that actually. This took me like less than five minutes to make a whole new NPC and most of that was just writing the content and then when I create quests it's super easy to assign the quests to different NPCs so I'm pretty pumped about this system and how like it all is working together really well. Okay, so I've done a bit of planning, um, and I think the next feature I want to implement is NPC schedules, which is maybe jumping the gun a little bit, but I'm kind of excited about like the narrative stuff, like the NPCs having quests and like the dialogue system and stuff. And I think combat will be like relatively easy and straightforward since I've already implemented it. So I kind of want to keep the train rolling on like the NPC stuff because that's just I don't know that's exciting me right now. So I've got sort of an idea of how the schedule system will work. My main goal right now is just to keep it like super simple and just kind of get the idea across. I don't think I'll be able to finish it in this devlog, but I'll probably like lay the foundation this week and weekend and then the next devlog will probably be all about the NPC schedules. It's getting pretty late and it's almost dinner time, but uh, I'm gonna start working on this and then I'll catch up with you when I have another update. So it's Sunday now and the week got a little bit away from me. I got my COVID and flu vaccine and that kind of just like knocked me out for the last couple days of the week. So I don't really have another update on the NPC schedule stuff that will probably come in the next devlog. I'll talk more about it. Uh, I did sort of lay a little bit of the groundwork, but I haven't done a ton of development on it yet. So yeah, that'll just be safe for next time. But anyways, thanks for joining me for another devlog. Um, let me know what you thought of this kind of like vlog style that I did. It was uh, harder than I expected to like film my whole day. I feel like I got very distracted most days and like, I don't know, I was super lazy and like forgot to film a bunch of stuff. So yeah, I don't know if I'll keep doing it this way. It was just kind of like a experiment to see if I enjoyed this kind of style of filming or whatever. So yeah, let me know what you think. And yeah, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe or whatever.